Hello everyone. How are you precious standards? I am so excited again about coming on, joining with you all so that we can take our authority after hearing what God says about us and about our marriage and who God says we are and who God says our spouse are. That's all that matters. And so thank you all precious people of God for joining me. And also I want to welcome my first timers as well. God bless you. All of your prayers, people of God, and your support and all your encouragement is so awesome and encouraging unto me. And I thank you all as well for standing with me. And so we're going to jump right into the word of God. Hallelujah. I am so excited. You know, I want us to look again at what God says about us. We're not focusing on anything else. It doesn't matter. What's going on around us is all about what God says. You know, the devil don't know what to do with you when your mind is always stayed on what God says about you. He has no way to get in. The word of God tells us, don't give him no place. Don't give the devil no place in your life. Don't give him your mind or your time. Not one second. Your mind should be stayed upon the Lord. Let him only be your focus. And this is how you'll overcome the devil. Hallelujah. Every time. And so I want us to get back to what God says. Let's look at his word, people of God. Remember the Bible tells us, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. And I want to read it this time from the King James Version. It says in verse 21, Oh, talking about us husbands and wives, praise the Lord, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves, in verse 22, unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Now this is what God says about your husband, woman of God. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And I'm going to read these verses all the way down to the 33rd verse. So follow along with me. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Your husband is your head, woman of God, as Christ is to the church. And that settles it. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. So let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. And so we bind the works of the devil that wants to come in and divide what God has joined together. We bind it in the name of Jesus and come against the works of the devil. For the Bible says that a wife must be submitted unto her husband in everything. And that settles it. And now in verse 25 it says, And husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that love his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Hallelujah. And for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. And you see, woman of God and man of God, the enemy wants to fight and divide God's holy will. The enemy wants to come in and hinder this will. But we 
must stand against him with the word of God and cast him out. Declaring what God says about your marriage. Declaring who your spouse is. Hallelujah. Declaring how God sees you and what God has commanded. You know, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ done as well in the wilderness. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 4 that the Lord took the word of God and spoke and declared it to the enemy. What was written and we must do the same thing for this same cause. We must take the word of God and bind the devil with it. Cast him out. And remember when the Lord did that and took his authority, the devil left him. The devil will leave that marriage of yours. It's just a matter of time. And yes, he may go toe to toe with you. Yes, he may fight. Yes, he may come against you with everything he knows how to break you and cause you to give up. Yes, there may be painful moments, but you stand on the word of God. Having done all, stand. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us again, remember that right here in Ephesians chapter 6. The Bible tells us in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take Unto you the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And you know yes this is a time we have all been facing. Evil. But people of God the word of God is telling us what to do. The Bible says. To stand and having done all to stand. And stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breast plate of righteousness. And your feet shod. With the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And so we are quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the Bible says and take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. That word people of God that you declare out of your mouth. Is a weapon against the enemy. It's what will cause him to flee. This is what you stand with. You stand being girded with truth. Having the truth. Hallelujah. Oh, covering your heart and your mind. This, this is what will bring peace. This is what will put out all the fiery darts of the enemy. This is what will give you the power to stand against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. And against all spiritual wickedness that you are witnessing. When you find your husband or your wife. Man of God. And you woman of God. Has gone astray. And not walking according to what is written. When you know who's behind it. It is the enemy. You are looking at the days of evil in your marriage. And so you have to stand against the works of the devil. Cast him out. God has given you power. Power over all the power of the enemy. Powers to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means harm us. And remember we also can pray. We who are in Christ Jesus. We can pray and ask of anything according to his will. And he will hear us. The Bible tells us this in 1 John chapter 5. Let's never forget it. The Bible tells us in verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence. In verse 14 that we have in him our Lord. That if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions. That we desired of him. And so people of God. We know what our Lord desires and want for us. Our marriages. To be as it is written. Where a husband love his wife as Christ loves the church. And the wife submits to her husband. Out of the fear of the Lord. Out of reverence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you are facing trials and tribulations. The Bible tells us in James chapter 5 verse 13. If there is any troubles or suffering of hardships, let him pray. 
And so the word of God tells us that if we pray and ask of anything according to God's will that pleases him. These things that you are facing in your life that's not lining up according to the will of God. We can go to the Lord Jesus Christ and pray during these times. We can go to the Father. Hallelujah. And we can ask of anything in our Lord's name. And it will be given unto us. He will hear us when we ask for his word. Because his word is the will for our lives. His word is our life. Hallelujah. His word was written for us. That we may have life and have it more abundantly. The word of God is seed to us who are the source. So we can produce a harvest. So that we can see the manifestations of what God promised us. And so we are to take a hold of God's word. And receive the engrafting word of God. And let it be in our hearts. For it is the harvest that God has given to us. And so the word of God tells us to pray about it. Pray about everything. And the Lord Jesus Christ tells us. That when we have prayed. According to his word. In Mark 11. Verse 24. Hallelujah. Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray. Believe that ye receive them. And ye shall have them. And so the Lord is saying believe that it is yours. Believe what is written in the word of God is what I've given unto you. It was written for your learning. It was written so that you will have the things you need. It was written because it is God's promises to us, the church, his body. This is why we must turn to the word of God. If we want to know his will and what he will give us. And so stand on the word of God, people of God. Hold on to it. Because remember, that's what the Lord Jesus Christ tells us as well. In Luke chapter 8. I'm going to turn there real quick. In Luke chapter 8, verse 15. He says, The seed that fell on the good soil. And we know that the seed is the word of God. He says, The seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word. Cling to it and patiently produce a huge harvest. And so the word that we have read concerning our marriages is showing us what God wants us to have and produce in our lives. And so when there is this thing that has come in to stand against us, the wicked works of the devil, we can pray to our God who will fight for us. Who will come in and deliver us. Who will remove the stony stubborn heart out as well. That Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 through 27 tells us about. That God is able to do for us. He is able to remove any stony stubborn heart. And take it out. And give them a new tender heart. And put his spirit in them and cause them to walk in his ways. And obey what his word is telling them. And obey his will. And so this is what you do. You continue meditating on the word of God. And see it as what's coming to pass. Remember the Lord says believe you receive it. And he's saying to cling on to it. Don't let it go. For this is what's going to produce a harvest in your life. Meaning this is what's coming to pass in your life. And so you have to continue coming against those thoughts. By hearing God's word. Keep meditating on that promise. Hold on to it. Cling on to it, Jesus says. This is the only way you're going to see it come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For what's coming your way, people of God. Your husband is the head of you, woman of God, as Christ is the head of the church. That is the mirror. The word of God is the mirror of God. It is what's your life. It is what is coming your way. And so this is why. You want to focus on it. Pay attention to it. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us this in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. Remember we talked about this on yesterday. But it's so important to be reminded again and again of what God has said about you. It is so important to be reminded of what we must do. Take your authority. Come against the works of the devil with the word of God. 
declare what God has said about your marriage and stand on it. Hallelujah. And after the battle, you will still be standing. The devil won't be able to steal your marriage. The devil won't be able to continue doing what he is doing in the hearts of your spouse. God will save them through your prayers. Remember, that's what 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 16 says. That God will save your spouse, woman of God, a man of God. Through you. And this is why. We can stand. On their behalf. Hallelujah. That marriage is healed in Jesus name. I declare it. It is written. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Even if there has been a divorce. God hates divorce. God is able to restore all things. And make them new. For he is the creator of all things. Hallelujah. The old things are being passed away. And God is bringing forth the new. Believe it, people of God. Hallelujah. And now I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for what you are doing and what you have done through your blood. Our marriages are healed. They are delivered and set free. They illustrate Christ. They illustrate yours and the church united into one. Thank you for making us one with our spouse and we bind the works of the devil. We cast them out in the name of Jesus Hallelujah, what you have joined together, Lord God, can nothing separate. And so we thank you for the harvest that is coming our way, which is through the word of God that is hidden in our heart, O oh God. And may you bring strength, Father, in the name of Jesus to that one that is struggling in their faith. Oh, Father God, cause their eyes to see and their ears to hear. Cause them to remain strong, O oh God. Remind them of the promises of God when trouble comes up against them. Oh God, when things begin to surround them, help them to remember your word for their lives and their marriage and their spouse in the name of Jesus. And I also thank you for everyone that has given, oh God, bless the works of their hands. Multiply that seed, oh God, in Jesus name. Thank you for their generosity, Lord. I pray you will bless them in every area of their lives. And Father God, I thank you for all the standards that have joined me. May you continue keeping them strong. And we thank you that the best is yet to come. That harvest, hallelujah. And we thank you that it's going to be huge and greater. Greater than it ever was in our marriages. We ask it in Jesus' name and thank you that it is done. And we all say amen, hallelujah. Amen and amen. That marriage is healed, the people of God. It is yours. Keep holding on to it. Don't let it go. Remember that God loves you and I love you too. And until next time, keep standing. It is yours. Bye-bye.